Most fans of Nirvana by now are familiar with the song Sappy, but it's probably unknown to most of the other people in the world. It is mind-boggling to me how a song this good, recorded professionally in the studio four times, never made it to one of their own albums upon their original release. We will roll through the timeline of this song, which spanned the entirety of the band, covering the studio sessions, notable live performances, and some speculation about the guitarist Kurt may have used to record them. No, verse, chorus, verse. Verse, chorus, verse. It's a really old song. But wait, what's it supposed to be called? No, it's Sappy. No, it's I called, don't know. It's Sappy, though. It's one of those songs that we've been trying to record for every since record. we've been a band. Yeah. Every time we've went into the studio, we've tried to record the song, and it sucked every time. It's Sappy, right? What did it suck? It just... It wasn't yeah, it sucked, R. and this time it just almost didn't suck. <laughs> oh, yeah, it sucked every time. It, it, barely, yeah, sucked it barely, barely sucked this time. I really hate to divulge meaning from song lyrics, because I believe that each one of us can draw out our own meanings. But some say that one of Kurt Cobain's turtles was named Sappy, and the concept, or maybe just the title, was based upon his turtle. They're real docile. They don't move. They show no emotion. They're so inanimate, you know? They're just the stupidest idea of a pet. I like cats and, and animals that require attention. You know, you have to take care of them, and basically they just have this fuck you attitude. So I'm stuck in this tank, I, I'm miserable, I hate you, and I'm not gonna perform for you. Those shells really aren't that helpful. It's real sensitive, and if you knock on them, it hurts them. So it really isn't the protective covering that, you, that everyone thinks it is. They fall on their back, they, they'll split it open and die. An early home demo recording of Sappy, circa 1988, sometimes referred to as Sad, was a take of just Kurt playing his guitar in a clean picking arrangement rather than strummed out chords. I remember hearing this version on bootlegs in the late 90s which were sometimes sold in non-corporate music stores. On the bootlegs there was a fair amount of white noise in the background. I don't have much insight on the guitar used, but it could have been his first Sunburst Univox High Flyer Phase 3. This demo version was released in 2004 on the box set with the lights out and again in 2015 on the montage of Heck home recordings. On January 2nd and 3rd, 1990, Nirvana recorded Sappy at Reciprocal Studios in Seattle with producer Jack and Dino. This recording features Chad Channing on drums and has distortion throughout. The lyrics differ slightly in this version. Nirvana worked for 10 hours of session time dedicated to just this one song. This version was eventually released on the Sliver Best of the Box set in 2005. Jack and Dino has stated that part of what took so long is that they were trying to get a Steve Albini drum sound using many different room mics. I couldn't find any information on what guitar he may have used for this session, but he did use a blue Gibson SG just a few days later on January 6, 1990 at the University of Washington in Seattle, which previously hung on guitarist Sluggo Cauley's wall. Kurt basically traded his bashed up sunburst Fender Mustang which came to an end at the Sonic Temple in Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania on July 9th, 1989. It's tough to confirm with the limited pictures available of this guitar, but reportedly it had a Univox High Flyer Phase 3 bridge humbucker and an unknown single coil at the neck. Another one of Kurt's custom touches was a load of electrical tape at the bottom, holding the bottom half of the body together. A black left-handed Hondo 737, a Gibson Les Paul copy with two humbuckers, was also debuted at this show. This was another short-lived guitar that got smashed up on January 12th in Portland, so it's also possible that this guitar could have been used. Sappy was again recorded at the Smart Sessions, which ultimately became the demos for four of the songs on Nevermind with Butch Vig during April 2nd through April 6th of 1990. This version was eventually released on the deluxe edition of Nevermind. It has a clean guitar sound, mostly except for the use of distortion on the solo. Chad Channing also handled the drums on this one shortly before he was let go. This version was intended for the band's second Sub Pop album. Kurt probably used his Epiphone ET270, his main live guitar for the first four months of 1990, to record this song. And he probably used it for all the other songs too, except for Polly, which was on the Stella Acoustic. This Epiphone is kind of an oddity for Kurt, having single coil pickups instead of a humbucker, but it just goes to demonstrate it's not always about having specific gear, but EQing the different frequencies in your settings on both your amp and your distortion pedals to get the most out of what you already have. A third studio version was recorded at Sound City Studios in Van Nuys, California in May 1991, but is yet to be released. This version with Dave Grohl now on drums was intended for Nirvana's second album Nevermind but it didn't make the cut. And as much as I love the song, I think that album is perfect as it is. 
My guess is that Kurt may have used either his rare Mozart gospel or the tunematic Japanese left-handed strat to record. Nirvana recorded a fourth and final version of Sappy during the February 1993 sessions for In Utero. With this version, the song was finally released in the same year on the compilation album supporting a charity for AIDS awareness called the Red Hot Organization, although the song was not listed on the back, inside, or on any promotional ads in magazines. It seems Geffen Records did not want Nirvana's name listed on the album, possibly thinking that it could interfere with the record sales of In Utero, which was scheduled to come out a month before that No Alternative album. On the Red Hot Organization website, they eventually publicly acknowledged the song, stating the title was hidden for legal reasons. In 1993, Kurt began referring to the song Sappy as Verse Chorus Verse, a very generic sounding title. This sometimes causes confusion, as Nirvana already had another unused track with the same title which they recorded during the Nevermind sessions. This other track they called Verse Chorus Verse was occasionally referred to as In His Hands, but over time the lyrics evolved away from that significantly. The In Utero Sappy version, with a slightly increased tempo, was eventually released on the 2004 set with the lights out, and then again on the 2013 deluxe version of In Utero. My guess on this one would be that he used his Stage 2 Univox High Flyer modded with a Phase 3 Univox Humbucker, his Jaguar, or maybe Steve Albini's Aluminum Valino guitar. In Cobain's journals released in 2002, it shows the song Verse Chorus Verse as the proposed 12th song on the album, immediately preceding the closing track All Apologies, and Verse Chorus Verse was also briefly considered to be the album title. As far as live performances, Sappy was played live at least 25 times. It was played at least 11 times in 1989, and potentially more as there are at least 4 shows without documented set lists or audio confirmation. Set lists indicate Sappy was performed for the first time live in Oldenburg, Germany on November 12, 1989. However, Sappy is missing from the known audio recordings. In the limited pictures from this show, we can see Kurt playing his Red Hagstrom 2. This tour was the Heavier Than Heaven tour of Europe with Tad. Recordings are available for when they played it the next night at Fabric in Hamburg, Germany on November 13th. On November 15th, Nirvana played at the Schwimmbad Music Club in Heidelberg, Germany, again with the Red Hagstrom, and that is the earliest video footage that I could find of Sappy. The next night in Nuremberg, we have audio only of Sappy. Sappy returned on November 20th, 1989 at Capu in Linz, Austria. There is video of this one, and it's one of my favorite shows of the Bleach era. So go search that up, and you can see the Red Hagstrom 2 in all of its glory blasting through an amp egg head through what looks to be a Marshall 412 cab with duct tape over the logo. On November 22nd, they played Sappy in Vienna, and we have high quality audio only. Sappy was played on November 26, 1989 at Bloom in Magazzo, Italy, and there is audio for this one and some video of other songs. Sappy was not played the next night on November 27, 1989 at the Piper Club in Rome where he smashed his red hagstrom at the end. For the November 29th show in Geneva, Sappy and Where Did You Sleep Last Night are the only available audio recordings. On December 2, 1989, at Democracy in Ghent, Belgium, they played Sappy and Kurt used a new black Washburn Force 31 with a matching headstock and white pickguard given to him by a sub-pop high up, Jonathan Poneman. The Washburn replaced the Hags Room. They played Sappy again December 3rd at the Astoria Theatre in London for Lamefest UK and that was the last show of the European tour. There is audio from this show available which also contains the bass solo and that opens up the live album from the muddy banks of the Wishka. This is the last of the five shows for the Washburn, smashing it at the conclusion. Moving on to 1990, we have again 11 documented performances with 10 of them occurring between January and early May. On January 6, 1990, Sappy was played on the University of Washington in Seattle using the Sluggo Blue Gibson SG and audio exists. Sappy audio also exists for January 12th at Satyricon in Portland, Oregon, where the black Honda was reportedly smashed at the end. Sappy was also played February 9th at the Pine Street Theater in Portland, where Kurt smashed his green Mustang at the end. We have great audio and video footage of Sappy from February 12th, 1990 at the Cattle Club in Sacramento. Like the earlier Capu show, this is definitely one I would recommend you looking up. Sappy was played on February 14th at Kennel Club in San Francisco, as well as the 16th at Bogarts in Long Beach, and audio video is available for both. On March 12th, 1990, at the town pump in Vancouver, they brought Sappy back and we have audio only. Sappy was absent from April 26, 1990 at the Pyramid Club in New York City where Kurt smashed his red Epiphone ET270 as he was frustrated at the awful sound mix. The next night in Amherst, Massachusetts on April 27th, Kurt played Sappy using his homemade green Mustang shown in the In Bloom Sub Pop video from the next night April 28th show at Maxwell's in Hoboken, New Jersey, but Sappy was skipped there. 
Audio exists from May 2nd, 1990 at the Milestone in Charlotte where Sappy was played during the likely debut of the Aria Pro CS250. Hey, go check out that video, it's pretty neat. But anyway, this was the last time that Chad Channing rocked out to it and it disappeared from the rotation during the eight shows that Dale Crover filled in during August and Dan Peters for that one show at the Motorsports Garage on September 22nd. After a seven-month absence, on November 25th, 1990, at the off-ramp in Seattle, Sappy was included in their long 31-song setlist, as this show was likely the first Sappy live performance, with Dave Grohl hitting the skins now. After that off-ramp show, Sappy would not be played live for over three years, despite the three additional recording attempts. Let's fast forward to 1994. During Nirvana's In Utero 1994 tour of Europe, Sappy re-emerged and was performed three times. It was played on February 6, 1994 in Cascais, Portugal, February 16, 1994 in Rennes, France, and the final live performance took place on February 25th of 1994 at Palo Trasardi in Milan, Italy, less than six weeks prior to Kurt Cobain's death in early April. Portugal and France are audio only, but there is video footage of the Milan show, so check that one out if you can. You can see Kurt rocking his sonic blue prototype Jagstang. He walks over to a folding chair and sits down and plays during the solo. Alright guys, that's going to do it for this one. Please subscribe, smash the like button, and I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, so That's an old song, too. I'm assuming they just approached you and asked you to contribute something, and you said, yeah. Here's a song call. from the in the 80s. <laughs> you wrote that song in the 80s, Curry. <sighs> what period were you in? Shut Third up. period, just before lunch. Third period.